welcome back to my channel medicine of bones around today we'll talk about acid base balance so it's one of the most important topic you know the regulations in terms of the acid and the bases within the body okay you can say that the topic from the aspect of biochemistry from the physiology everything you will get the concept of what acid base balance now see in our body there is a wonderful mechanisms by which we will see that what the body that will try to maintain always the acid base balance okay now before that Going before going in details about the you know we will get the different kinds of the manifestations for example we will get the metabolic acidosis we will get the metabolic alkalosis you know we will get also along with that respiratory you know respiratory acidosis respiratory respiratory you know, alkalosis all these things how they are getting maintained within the body the different types of the mechanisms we will talk about all these things in details first let's uh, start with the very basic things so when you are talking in terms of the acid base balance at first we need to know when you are talking in terms of the acid so acid means what whenever we are saying in terms of the acid acid means basically we just understand in terms of the concentration of the what proton concentration of proton or which is the hydrogen ion now at first we have to know what is the you know what is the value of what is the value of what proton concentrations in terms of the extracellular environment what is the value of proton concentration in extracellular environment first we need to know that thing so if we say it over here try to understand the concentrations for the proton in the extracellular environment that is near about how much 0 point we get 1 2 3 4 5 6 this much 4 equivalent per liter we will get this much concentration of the what proton what in the extracellular environment okay now the, there is a, there are a scientist whose name is you know Sorensen Sorensen who gave the concept of the pH how we are getting the concept of the pH that I am going to talk now. Now at first we got what that uh, the concentration of the proton while within the extracellular environment that is 0. Point, then you have to put on a 6 0 then 4 or you can say another way for it that is 40 nano nano equivalent per liter you can show us. Okay, now the scientist saw in what he did, he just applied some log, he just took the, you know, just took the logarithms over here. So at first he took the log up in the both side. So if you take in this, so you will get how much? Log this much and log of this value. 0 0.00, 0 3, 4, 5, 6, 4. Okay, and after that he, he just took actually the negative log values, he just took what the negative log values. So whenever he took the negative log values, if you just take it over here, try to understand, we will get how much minus log of h plus, we will get how much, if we just do the calculations, we will get around, we will get how much here, minus 7.4. But as he took the negative, just to make it positive, just to make the value for the pH that is positive, he just took the you know, negative logarithm values over here. In terms of the proton concentrations, so we will also apply over here the minus. So ultimately, we will get how much? pH will get how much? 7.4. Now, see what is pH? The pH is basically you can say the negative logarithm values of the proton concentrations. So, what is pH? You can say the pH is that is the what? Negative or logarithm value in terms of the proton concentration in the extracellular environment. You can say over here, okay. Now, what do you know? What just do you have to learn? What do you learn after this much? Try to understand from here that we got the pH how much? 7.4 for example over here. Now how the acids are produced? How we are getting this H plus? From where? For that thing let's uh, draw a little bit of the circulatory portion, general circulations. The general circulation and for example these are the cells. These are the cells. These are the cells, the tissues. As we know in each sense, always we are getting the respirations, we are getting the, in the metabolism. So whenever we see the metabolism we, which in you know within the cells, whenever we will get the metabolism within the cells, we will get the productions of what carbon dioxide and water molecules. Along with that carbon dioxide, water will get also energy. But the main thing over here to explain the acid base balance will talk about what? We will get the productions of the carbon dioxide. And as we know the water is available over here, so we will get how much? What we will get over here? So you will get the formation of what? Carbonic acid. So when you are getting the carbonic acid, try to understand it will be dissociated into what? It 
factor into what h plus okay let's write it over here over here in terms of the formation of the what carbonic acid the next thing for example in the cell that can metabolize also for example the cell is metabolizing the sulfur containing for example amino acid sulfur containing amino acid for example we can see over here that methionine or cysteine okay so whenever the sulfur containing amino acids sulfur containing amino acids that will be metabolized get productions of what sulfur dioxide whenever it will get reacted with water we will get the productions of H2SO4 so we will get the productions of what H2SO4 and it will be dissociated into what as I said before also like this one we will get 2H plus plus SO4 2 minus in the same way within the cells we can also see the metabolism of the for example you know the phospholipids so whenever we get the metabolisms of the phospholipid for example I am writing it over here phospholipid at that time, we will get the production of phosphoric acid. We will get the production of phosphoric acid. We will get 3H plus plus PO4 3 minus. And for long term exercise, whenever we are doing the exercise, at that time we can you know, get the production of lactic acid. So, on exercise, you can say write it over here in the same way. On exercise, you will get what? The lactic acid productions. Okay. So from here we will also get the production of what? H plus. So ultimately we are getting the production of the acids and sometimes if we just take the methanol or we, for example the salicylic acid through the you know injections, they are all responsible for producing the what H plus within the human body. So as I said we will go within the external environment, we can see in the better way. So ultimately we will get the production of the H plus we get the production of H plus like this we are getting the production of production of proton okay and whatever we will get over here this we have to take the negative logarithm balance for the proton concentration and that will be the ph over here that will be the ph okay now we will talk about some things some changes and the importance of ph for example try to understand if i increase the if i increase the for example if i just let's uh, take a container over here let's take a container and whenever I am just taking the container over here for example we add the acid molecules if I add the acid molecules over here more amount of the I am just adding proton of HCl over here and whenever I am adding the H plus over a definite load do you know the pH that will fall down now why the pH that will fall down on adding the acid molecules try to understand from here for example if, we, if I just increase the value let's write it over here okay log of H plus, I am just increasing the value, I am increasing the value for 10 times. So 0 0.5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. If I increase the value for 10 times, at that time, you know, try to understand this decimal. From here it will come over here. As a result, we will get the pH how much? It will be 6.4. It will be 6.4. That's why try to understand as we are getting the negative value over here. So the try to understand whenever the negative value that is getting increased. At the time they are supposed to be what the pH that will fall down. As I say, try to understand that we are getting the what, negative logarithm values of the proton concentration that is the pH. So whenever I am just you know increasing the concentrations, the definitely the negative value is getting increased. So definitely the pH that is supposed to be fall down, that is supposed to decrease. Now in the <coughs> so in the same way we we'll get over here, for example, the 6.4. In the same way, if we just remove the H plus, okay, if we just remove the proton concentration from the solution or from the container at that time whatever the thing we see over here try to understand from these questions so whenever i just for example i am decreasing the proton concentration by one tenth time if i just decrease the proton concentration one two three four six four okay by ten times if i just decrease so definitely we will get one more zero so at that at that time what the zero that will come over here so whenever the zero that will come over here and if we just take the logarithm value we will get on 8.4 that means try to understand if we just remove the proton as a result we will get the increase of the pH and if we just add the proton that means if we increase if we just do the additions of the acid as a result we will get what the pH that will fall down 
So that's why whenever I just used to read this thing that whenever we were adding the you know the H plus concentration within the solution, the pH that will fall down. And whenever we will just you know remove the proton concentration from any solutions, we'll see within the solution whatever the thing will see the pH that will get increased. That means for for example, if it was you know in the acidic environment, now it will be the basic environment. Okay. So it's clear now. Try to understand. Here what we are getting from 7.4. We are getting 6.4 from 7.4 6.4. Now see slight change, slight change in the pH concentration. There we are getting slight change within the pH concentrations. But whatever thing we will see over here, there will be large concept large changes in terms of the H plus concentration. Now whenever you are seeing the pH value that is getting decreased, for example, from 7.4 to 6.4 by one. If we see the decreased pH value by one from 7.4 to 6.4, is a slight change in the pH value, but just to change this portion from to six point from seven point four to six point four, there should be additions of large amount of the ACLs or you can say the H plus concentration within the solution. In the same way, just to increase the value from seven point four to eight point four, we have to okay. It's the slight change in terms of the value of the pH. Just to do these things, we have to remove you know larger amount of the H plus concentrations from the solution. Okay. Now we'll talk about another concept. It is known as Buffer, but before going to the buffer, we have to know one more thing also over here. Try to understand from here that if I say what is the importance of pH, what is the importance of pH? So, importance of the pH, try to understand in your body as we know, there are you know, always we are getting within the body what the biochemical reactions are taking place always in the, in the different parts of the body. So, just to conduct the biochemical process or the biochemical reactions in the body. We need to use the word enzymes. So this, is, for example, most of the enzymes in our body, they are act, they are just functional at pH 7.4. So most of the enzyme, they are active at 7.4. Most of the enzyme. Now if they don't get the proper you know proper pH over here, if we get the fluctuations in the pH, if we get the fluctuations. For example, it's a 7.4. If we get increasing, again decreasing, increasing, decreasing, just like this. If we get in this way. So whenever we get the fluctuations in the value of the pH at the time, there will be not proper biochemical reactions. That will be not proper, you know, breakdown of the nucleus. So whenever there will be not proper, you know, breakdown of the pH, so what are the problem we see definitely? There will be no production of the energy, so no utilization of the nutrients. As a result, we are not we are not supposed to get the energy. So whenever the energy will be not there, definitely we will get the what? The individual they will go to. So we will get the what? death of the individuals over here. Now this is the importance of the pH. Just to conduct all the biochemical reactions, we need to have the optimum pH within the body. Just to con just to what increase the you know speed of the reactions as well as, well as to you know produce the product. The enzymes they need the optimum pH. But if the optimum pH now is not over there, for example, seven point four, if we don't get over here in the body, at that time most of the enzymes they will be functionless. Okay. So this is the importance of the enzymes. Now we'll talk about the concept of the buffer. So what is buffer? What is buffer? Okay, let's talk about these things over here. So buffer is a subst chemical substance. Try to understand. If, okay, let's write it over first. Then I am just explaining the terms. What is buffer? Now, how can we define the buffer? See, we can define the buffer, the substances that are having the capacity to bind with proton and they can also release the proton as well. So what did I say you? I have to write down it over here. So the sub chemical substances, chemical substances having the capacity, capacity to bind with proton, to bind with Proton. Along with that, they are also having the capacity to release proton, okay, or release of proton. This is in terms of the H plus. So this type of the thing that is known as buffer. To understand the buffer, let's uh, take an example. Then it will be more clear, <coughs> more clarifying for you. Let's uh, take the two container. I'm just taking the two containers. Okay. Here, for example, we have the buffer system, and here buffer system is absent. 
Add the piece is also 7.4. At first we are getting 7.4. And here we are also getting the pH 7.4 also. We have made the pH 7.4 over here also. Now try to understand what is the most important or the interesting thing over here. Whenever we are adding the acid, for example, I am adding HCl over here. In the same way, I am also adding the HCl over here. When the HCl is coming over, definitely we will get the breakdown of the what? HCl will get the productions of H plus and Cl minus. So as it is at the concentration of the H plus, that will be increased by within the container or within the sample. Now whenever the pH that will be, whenever the you know concentration of the protons that will be increased, as a result we will get the pH, for example, from here, we will get, for example, 2.5. We are getting the pH that is getting decreased, I don't understand, from here, from 7.4 to, for example, 2.4. Okay, we are getting from uh, 7.4 to 2.4 that is getting decreased by 5 that's important okay so oh, I see this is a huge changes it's a huge changes the pH changes from 7.4 to 2.4 the huge changes but for example if I just say over here whenever in the same amount of the for example I have added 100 milli equivalent 100 milli equivalent well, later in the same in the same concentration if we just add 100 equivalent over here also if we just add now in the same way try to understand the pH here we get you know the changes within the pH in the same way we get the production of the H plus over here now if we see the pH changes over here maybe we will get for example from 7.4 to 7.14 see what is this changes over here see that definitely there is something that is taking the H plus along with them so it is not letting the pH to fall down drop you know it is not letting the pH that means what the buffer system we are getting out the buffer system in this container that means this buffer system is not letting the pH to fall down that much like in this way so we will get only the slight changes within the pH concentrations or because of the value of the pH over here we will get the slight changes in the value of pH because of having the buffer system now whatever the thing is using the buffer system for example we will get the certain kinds of the you know substances and they are having the capacity to take the H plus the H plus for example over here now whenever the H you know HCl is coming whenever the HCl is coming they are taking the H plus along with them they are taking the H plus along with them whenever they are taking the H plus along with them the within the buffer system so we will see that within the container we will get the free H plus very less amount but here there is no buffer system there is no one to take the H plus to maintain the pH over here as a result, we will get the free H plus or the free you can say the proton concentrations within the first container that will be increased. So as a result, we will get the dramatically drop pH value from 7.4 to 2.4. But here, for the presence of the buffer system, the buffer that will take the H plus, as I said, they are having the capacity to bind with the H plus and also release of the proton over here. Okay. Now, how they can release? These are the buffers, right? Now, try to understand, if I just add if I add sodium hydroxide for example so whenever I will add the sodium hydroxide at that time whatever the thing we will see this will come within the solution and we will see the Na plus and we will get OH minus so whenever we will get the OH minus this H plus they will be removed this you know the buffer system that will or remove the H plus over here and this H plus that will react with the OH minus that is coming from the base as I said I am just adding the NOH we will get the production of the water molecules now the, try to understand the concept of the buffer from here they are having the capacity to bind their proton to release the proton and whenever they are releasing the proton from here they are getting binded or along with they are getting bounded along with what? OH minus hydroxyl ions they are forming the water molecules okay hope it's clear now from these things we will develop the one equation that is known as what? Hasselbeck equations Hasselbeck equations okay equation then I think it will be more clear for you I need to have a space okay I am using all this part okay so what do you know about Hazelbeck equation okay Heiselbeck equation. Now, as we know that within the human body, in the or you can in the medical sciences, we represent the what? We represent the, for example, the acidic compounds in this way. 
and we know that this H that will break down in the uh, reversible way in the what H plus plus A minus right now see when you are saying this is the for example it will act as a buffer now see this is the acidic buffer Y along with it we are getting the along with it we are getting the proton the H hydrogen but whenever it is it is grating breaking down it is what it is it is broken down into what H plus into A minus now see this A minus that will act as the basic buffer okay this will be the basic buffer and this will be the buffer because along with this the proton is added and along with this the proton is not added okay but it is having capacity to, to take the proton I just said it is having the capacity to release the what proton and it is having the capacity to what take the proton along with it so whenever a minus that will be added with the H plus again they will be converted into what H A now I, as we know that in the chemical reaction there are the two types of the constant we can get over here one is for example the forward you know can be you know forward reaction constant and it's the backward for example I am taking the K2 so K1 stands over here for the forward or reactions forward reactions you know constant and for the backward reactions constant now if we just put the equations over here how can we write another form from the basic chemistry knowledge as we know that we can represent this thing in this way that k1 multiply ha that's just we can write what k2 multiply what h plus and I think it will be yes let's use this color the thing now if you want to represent this equation in this way for example I am just taking the ratio of the k1 by k2 I can write in this way that h plus, uh, h plus and a minus whole divided by what h whole divided by h okay now try to understand if I just put this was the k1 by k2 as we know this is the what equilibrium constants for the chemical reactions in the forward and the backward steps okay. so we can write for example, I am just taking the k1 by k2, this ratio, the ratio of these two constants for the forward reaction and the backward reaction, I am representing in terms of the k. So if I write in terms of the k, so you can write what? k equals to h plus, plus a minus whole divided by h. Now if I say what will be the value for h plus, because in terms of these things, if you want to find out the proton concentrations from these equations, sometimes this question is given to find out the proton concentration from the Hazel back equations at the time what we are supposed to do if we just take the H plus for example I am writing this way so whatever from the normal mathematics as we know in the equations part that will get what K multiply H A whole divided by what whole divided by A negative right that means the anion part over here will get now try to understand we are getting the H plus over here uh, we have also got the H you know these portions over here now as I said in the earlier whenever we will get the negative logarithm of H plus H whenever we will get the no negative logarithm of the proton concentrations that will be only the pH now the same, if we just take the negative logarithm for these things what we are supposed to get in the same way you have to also get have to also take the what negative logarithm for this thing okay so if we just take the negative logarithm I'm just splitting this whole part we get minus log k minus log okay h a or divided by a negative okay now as I said we'll get the negative logarithm value of the proton concentration proton concentration I said that we'll, whenever we'll get the negative logarithm value of the proton concentration that will be regarded as pH so we'll get the we can write it over here the pH that's your okay pH and I'm just taking the log k that means it's the constant you know, it's the what the logarithm value of the sorry logarithm value of the constant is the logarithm value of the constant so I'm writing in this way there is the p k for example and whatever this one you can write minus log what h a by a negative right now if you want to make this person positive if you want to put the positive over here what you are supposed to put so we can put for example we have to just do the reverse things the a is what the a negative that means the anion part that should come over within the numerator and the h that should that is supposed to come down over within the denominator right so we can write it over here ph that is equals to pk and we can write plus 
you know log what a negative 4 divided by h a now that will be the equations as far as you know the hazel case hazel back sorry hazel back equation is concerned hazel back equation is concerned over here now sometimes <laughs> they can ask you to find out the value for for example you know uh, the ratio for these portions if they ask for the ratio for example for these portions a negative by h how can we find out or this ask to the what will be the value for ph so whenever they will ask for value for example i am just taking the value okay let's erase some portions from here okay i am just taking this way over here okay as the normal as we got over here h a that will be dissociated into what h plus plus a now whenever they are saying to find out the value for ph in the equations they have given the value for p six okay and they have given the value for concentrations of the concentration of the a that is 100 mill equivalent and for h a for example 1 mill equivalent over here now how can you find out the value for this thing so you can find out easily so as you know the pa that will be equal to how much pk plus logarithm of how much for example you know as you know that what it is value is how much 100 by 1 so you can write it down 100 only 100 by 1 means 100 so if you take the values so p pk the value for pk is given now 6 plus if you take the value from the log 100 we will get 2 so you get the value of ph 8 over here so like this we can find out the value for ph in the same way if you want to find out the value for if you want to find out the value for you know the, if you want to find out the ratio for these portions a negative by h that means the anion by the main form that means the acid form over here okay how can we find out so let's find out the ratio form how can we find out okay let's continue to find out the ratio how can we find out the ratio so when you are talking in terms of the finding out the ratio how can we find out so as we know the normal equations for pH that is equals to pK plus you know or logarithm values of you know as you got a negative and part by H A. Now I am just taking these values H A as we know that is getting dissociated into proton plus and over here I am taking right now Okay. pH value, I am taking how much? I am taking the pH value is 5. For pK, for example, 6. I have to find out the ratio by A by H, right? I have to find out the ratio by A negative by H. So, how can we find out for, from here? So, as we know that it will be how much? It will be 5, it will be 6 plus log of A negative by H A if you put this whole value log of A negative by H A what we are supposed to get from here try to understand we will get 6 minus 5 sorry 5 minus 6 so 5 minus 6 means how much we are supposed to get minus 1 and then as we know minus 1 we can replace it in terms of log of how much 1 by 10 so we can equalize we can equalize the what from both sides log log so what will be the ratio for these things we will get A negative whole divided by H A that will be 1 by 10. So we get the ratio for it A negative by H A negative by H that will be in terms of the 1 by 10. Okay. And which they can also give you to find it. Okay, once we got once we got the pH, we got the value, you know, the ratio for A negative by H A. And right now we have to find out the value for the pH. How can we find out the value for pH? Now for that thing, okay. Let's talk about those things. Okay. For example, in the equations to find out the value for the pK, how can you use this equation? 